Yeah. And so I told him, I could, I was like, I could tell you exactly when and where it happened. It was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And you know what he had the nerve to say to me? Uh-huh. What was wrong? Uh-huh. Story time. Huh? All right. Story time. Hey, so welcome everybody. Welcome back again for another episode of Story Time. And Mr. Froggy, I will get back with you with our story after this, inshallah. So say salam alaikum to everybody. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tarahu li yawm al-deen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome everyone to another episode of Stories of the Prophets. So alhamdulillah, we're continuing. We're hopefully soon going to wrap up this series. Um, this is like the 37th or 38th episode that we've had, and we've gone through a lot of the prophets. If you remember last time, we spoke about the prophet Zechariah, he was, uh, he grew to an old age, and he was taking care of Maryam, um, Virgin Mary, and he saw that she would have fruit that was out of season, so she would be in the mihrab, which was the, the, the private spot that she used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever he would go in, he would find that she would have all this fruit that's out of season. And he would say, you know, where did you get this? And she would say, verily Allah gives to whomever he wills without, without measure. So then he made du'a for a child. When he heard this, he said, you know what? Even though I'm old, that if Allah's given giving to Maryam alayhi salam fruit that's out of season, maybe he will give me a child, even though my wife and I are, are of old age. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a son by the name of Yahya. And so he asked, he said, how can you grant me a child while I'm my wife and I are old? My wife is barren. My hair is gray. My bones are weak. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, we created you before and you were nothing. Meaning this is no, no more difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give a child to an, an old couple as it is to create any one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says, kun fayakun. He says, be and it is. So all of our, our births are miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says, be and we become. How was Yahya alayhi salam related to Maryam alayhi salam? Remember we mentioned that last time as well. He was her cousin. So um, now Yahya alayhi salam was a prophet of Allah. And he was blessed with so many good qualities. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we gave Yahya the book. And we told him to hold fast to the book, the Torah. And he was sent to Bani Israel. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him knowledge and wisdom from a very young age. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we made him compassionate towards others. So meaning all mankind, all of Allah's creatures, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he had such a deep love for all of Allah's creation. Allah granted him wisdom from a very young age. He was more of a serious and dutiful child. He was focused. He was interested in learning, not being silly and getting into trouble and doing bad things and lying and, and all of that stuff. He wasn't into that. He was interested in learning, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying, and uh, basically getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Yahya alayhi salam, he grew up in a very good environment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him from among the righteous. He was obedient to his parents. He was not from the arrogant. He was all, all in all, he was a very beautiful child. He was very um, respected by all of those who were around him. He never got married. He was dedicated completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people around him, they all loved him. He was very popular. Um, they would come and listen to him, relate from the Torah, tell them the stories, tell the people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remind people of, uh, to do good. And he would remind them and talk to them until tears would start rolling down the eyes of the people because of his reminders, how much he touched their hearts. His father... His father was who? Zakariya alayhi salam. His father, Zakariya alayhi salam, had passed away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when speaking about Zakariya alayhi salam and Yahya alayhi salam, 
He would say they used to rush towards goodness. They would call out to Allah having hope in Allah's mercy and they would fear of Allah's punishment. So they were humble and they were pious. So one day the king of that time, he had heard about Yahya السلام, and how much the people loved him, how, much, how popular he was. He was far more loved than the king himself. And the king was very jealous. This king had actually fallen in love with his own niece, his brother's daughter. And in one of his talks, one of Yahya alayhi salam's talks, and Yahya we know is um, in English is known as John, John the Baptist. So Yahya alayhi salam said that it is forbidden, it is haram to marry your own niece. And whoever does this would be cursed by Allah. And this is a great sin. So when the king heard this, he became very upset, even though uh, he's what, what Yahya alayhi salam is saying is correct. And he was talking the truth. He's saying, why is he saying these things when he knows that I want to marry my niece, someone from, uh, from his family? And so the niece also wanted to marry the king. And she would try to lure him, um, telling him not to listen to Yahya. And so she said to the king that we should get married. And as my mahr, as my dowry, I want the head of Yahya. So I want him killed. She was such a wicked woman. And so the king sends his army to kill Yahya alayhi salam and to chop his head off. Even though we said Yahya was very popular and loved by all the people around him. He was, Yahya alayhi salam, we know he was connected to Jesus, the prophet Isa alayhi salam, which we're going to mention inshallah in an upcoming session. So this army goes to Yahya while he is worshiping and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they kill him and they chop his head off and they took it back to the king. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verily those who disbelieve in Allah's signs and they go out killing the messengers of Allah and they kill those who are telling others to do good then give them the news of a severe punishment that awaits them. Those, they are those who, who their deeds have been wasted in this world and in the hereafter. And indeed in the hereafter, they will have no one who can help them. This is in Surat Ali Imran. And so again, we know this is the family of Imran. This is, that is the, the father of Mary, alayhi salam. We learn an important lesson here, that when we feel that we're bothered or annoyed by those who are reminding us to do good, um, those who teach us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his orders and his commandments, then we need to be careful because we should, we should love that we learn what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling of us. When we have a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should listen to it. And so we should appreciate the reminders of Allah. And when those, those people who correct us to do good and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to start the story today of, of Isa alayhi salam. Inshallah, this is going to be what wraps up our series of the prophets. Um, we're going to talk about Isa alayhi salam. We did last in, in uh, this past Ramadan, we did some of the uh, the parts of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, maybe inshallah when, if we get a chance we'll do a little bit more of that but this is going to end our series of the of the prophets within inshallah hopefully in the next couple sessions but I wanted to start on the story of Jesus peace be upon him so we know that Maryam alayhi salam's father Imran passed away and she was raised by her uncle Zakariya alayhi salam the Prophet Zakariya alayhi salam so the angels told her that Allah had chosen her, that she was purified in her character, in her worship. She was chosen above all women of her time. So she was commanded to submit to her Lord and to be of those who prostrate solely to her creator, to worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet وسلم, tells the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he says, Oh Muhammad, this is the story of the unseen that Allah is granting to you. Meaning if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadn't told you about the story, then you wouldn't know of this story. So she would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in her mihrab, in her private corner, in her private section. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remember in the book, the story of Mary, when she took her place of worship facing the east, she had a curtain between her and others, between her and her family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we set the angel Jibreel alayhi salam in the form of a handsome man, in the form of a beautiful man who went to her in her private corner of worship and she said, I seek protection of Allah from you. So Jibreel alayhi salam said, I am the angel of your Lord to grant you the glad tidings that you will bear a child who is very pure. And in another verse, he says um, that, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you a, a word, a good word. So what is that word? Kun fayakun, right? We said in the beginning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says be and it is. So this miracle of Allah is just some a word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and a miracle is, is created. So the creation of Isa alayhi salam. So he says that this child will be a sign and we are naming him from now. He is al-Masih, the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam the son of Mary. He, he will be known as Jesus, the son of Mary, Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi, alayhi So imagine what she is feeling now. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells her that he will be honored in this world and in the hereafter. He will be from among those who are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will speak to people from the cradle as well as when he is aged. And he is from among those who are pious. So she hears this message and now she's shocked. She's surprised. No man has ever touched her. She was not married. She barely came out of her place of worship. She said, how can I bear a child when no man has ever touched me? And I am not from among those who are unchaste. So remember that Zechariah, he asked a very similar question after he made dua and he prayed to Allah that Allah grant him a child and Allah told him, I will give you a child, Yahya. He then said, how can I be given a child when my bones are weak and my hair is gray and my wife is barren? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we created you before and you were nothing. So Maryam alayhi salam is also asking the same question. How can I be granted a child when I'm not married and no man has ever touched me? So this is very similar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that it's no more difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create Isa alayhi salam without a father as it is for him to create Yahya alayhi salam from elderly parents as it is for him to create us from, you know, two parents. It's, it's all easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He just says be and it is. And so he says that your child will be a sign for all of mankind. So you remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a human being with no parents. In the very beginning, we spoke about the prophet Adam alayhi salam. So he has no parents. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a human being from just a male, which is Eve. And so she was created from the rib of Adam alayhi salam. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, he creates all of us from a male and a female, from a mother and a father. So what is left? the one who is created from only a female and not a male, and that is Isa alayhi salam. But it's all the same to Allah. It is just as easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do any of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that it's easy for him. He doesn't need the help or the support of anyone. He doesn't need there to be a, a mother and a father for him to create. He creates whatever he wills, whenever he wills. So Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, is not the son of Allah. He was a creation of Allah. So the example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the example of Jesus is like the example of Adam. He said, be and he was. He, it was just a, a creation of Allah. So now Isa alayhi salam, 
begins to grow in the womb of Mary. And so Maryam السلام, she was in Jerusalem at the time, but then she went to Bethlehem. And she began to start worrying. She has to give birth to this child. What are people going to accuse her of? Maybe they're going to harm the child and do something to the child. And so the pains of birth drove her now when she was in Bethlehem to, to the trunk of a tree. The trunk, the, the, the trunk of a date palm tree. And so she said, I wish that I had died before this and I was a thing that was long forgotten. She was going through the pains of delivering a child by herself out out by a, by a tree in a, in a place that she had found. And so now she receives a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this message may have been from the angel Jibreel alayhi salam or from, from the child that was just born. And she hears a voice that says, do not be worried. Look beneath you. Allah has caused a gushing stream. So Allah caused a gushing stream for her so that she could drink. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives her the message. Now shake the date palm tree and fresh dates will fall down for you. So eat and drink from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always providing for her. Giving her, as she says, in the yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Allah provides from to whomever he wills without measure. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling her just to shake the date palm tree. So even though it's hard to shake a date palm tree and have dates fall, but he's telling her put forth some effort. And that's a lesson for all of us. If we want something from Allah, we at least put forth some effort and make dua that Allah will, will give us whatever is best, whatever we're looking for. So now she goes back to her people and uh, back to Jerusalem. And what does she have in her arms? Jesus, peace be upon him. And so she has this baby in her arms. What are people going to say to her? What will they do to her and her baby? In the next last couple sessions, inshallah, I'm hoping to complete the story of the Prophet Jesus alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. And inshallah we will end with a fun poem. So let me grab this fun poem. So this one is called Nobody. And this is also a Shel Silverstein poem like I've been reading lately. So this one is called Nobody. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. Nobody picks me peaches and pears. Nobody offers me candy and Cokes. Nobody listens and laughs at my jokes. Nobody helps me when I get in a fight. Nobody does all my homework at night. Nobody misses me. Nobody cries. Nobody thinks I'm a wonderful guy. So if you ask me who's my best friend in a whiz, I'll stand up and tell you that nobody is. But yesterday night, I got quite a scare. I woke up and nobody just wasn't there. I called out and reached out for nobody's hand in the darkness where nobody usually stands. Then I poked through the house in each cranny and nook, but I found somebody each place that I looked. I searched till I'm tired. And now with the dawn, there's no doubt about it. Nobody's gone. Jazakallah khair everyone for joining. And inshallah, we will see you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.